things. One is I wrote just as a Justice League Dark comic for a couple of years, just really not long before I started working on this. And then the template, the basic foundation for this story was a graphic novel by Mike Carey and Leonardo Manco called All His Engines. So we used that as our sort of our, our foundation and then built our story out from there. So if you know the graphic novel, you'll see the basic beats that you know from the graphic novel, but there's a whole lot of other stuff going on within the story. We pulled from other Constantine stories. I pulled a few things from my Justice League Dark run, created some new things, and put it all together into a new story. What are some of the challenges of uh, writing Constantine? You know, I, I didn't find a lot of challenges. Oh, no, I'll, I'll take that back. At first, um, the hardest thing about Constantine is that he's got this hard shell on the outside. Do you know what I mean? Right. And he's a bastard, and he's manipulative, and he's this, and he's that. And if the story is just going to focus on that aspect of his character, mm -hmm. that's not a story I can write, because there's nothing else going on underneath that. Right. The thing I really enjoyed about this story is that it's about that outer layer of Constantine, and because Chaz is there, and Chaz is so important to the story, it gets to the whole other layers of, of, of their connection and who he's hiding behind that shell. And something you don't hear a lot of, you know, where Constantine is involved, vulnerability, his vulnerability. And in a lot of ways, his biggest vulnerability is this guy who was his best friend since they were kids, you know? And that allowed the story to open up emotionally in a way that maybe you can't always do with Constantine. You know, the formats are different, and when you first, you know, the first time I ever wrote, like, a in a screenplay format, you're thinking a lot about the format, because you have to learn it, and all oh, this, this, you can't do that, because it's not a comic book, and I have to do this, and I have to do that, and it has, to, and you can't do too much interior monologue, because it's not that kind of thing, it's all about the, but after a certain point, that goes from your head to your, intuit to your intuition, so you don't think about the format anymore, and it really is just about the story. So whether you're, you know, you're going to write a novel, you're going to write a screenplay, you're going to write a comic book, whatever it may be, you're serving the story. And once you learn the form, you don't think about the form anymore. I've been doing comics so long, I don't think about how to put a comic together. I just know how to put a comic together. Good, bad, or indifferent, you know, but I know I just work with the form naturally. And the focus is on the story, not the form. Obviously, you have a lot of uh, animated experience. Yeah. And I was going to ask you something about Constantine, but now I'm wondering... Green Lantern pins. Oh. Are you trying to settle his? No, no, not at all. I just I have this one shirt that, that needs cufflinks. And a few years ago, my wife went out and got me some cool cufflinks. And I love, I love Green Lantern. There's no hint. There's no nothing. <laughs> you can ask me another question. That's, that, that doesn't count. Well, the world count. could use a Sinestro Corps. <laughs> but um, you obviously had the opportunity to write Constantine and Justice League Dark. You talked about the process of writing the character already. But how did you approach second story. Uh, were there any lessons you learned writing Constantine for that animated movie? Well, you know, the difference for me was simply that I was I wasn't coming to the character cold. You know, once you write a character you get a sense of them it's the old cliche, but it's true, they become real to you so you get to know them almost the way you get to know a person. So if, I think if I had not done my run on Justice League Dark and had not immersed myself in Constantine there, I would have had to learn a lot and, you know, I mean, it was you have to do a lot of research for these things anyway, because I don't know the whole history of Constantine for the past 35 years, you know? So you're on Wikipedia, and they're sending you graphic novels, and you're burying yourself in this. But having written the character, I felt like I knew him. And uh, this particular story, though, was an opportunity, since it really is very true to the, to the Constantine that we knew from, like, the Vertigo era, to really go deep and dark uh, and, and psychological and metaphysical and... So it, it took me to a whole new level with the character. But I had that familiarity to allow me to jump into this, as opposed to walking in cold and going, oh, man, what am I going to do? i, I got to figure out who this guy is. If you could just talk a little bit louder. I'm sorry. This, of course, there's a lot of ambient noise here. One of the things that I loved is that we got to go back a little bit in here, as you'll see, and talk about their childhood and talk about who they were to each other and how they kind of complemented each other. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, Chaz is everything that John isn't. 
he's sweet, he's vulnerable, he is uh, decent. <laughs> yeah. and, and yet they need each other for that because uh, Chaz needs that daring in his life, that danger that he doesn't bring to his own life. And, and John needs that vulnerability and that decency. And so the dynamic between the two of them is great. And it's really the emotional thread that carries through the entire movie. And there would be no movie without that relationship. Because without that, it's just a lot of stuff happening. You know, it's that, it's that emotional core between them and the fact that Chaz's daughter is threatened and what John has to go through and what Chaz has to go through to get her back. And as you'll see at the end, uh, which I can't, I don't want to give anything away, but there's some really, really powerful emotional moments at the end. And you don't always think of Constantine as the character where you get big, vulnerable, emotional moments. But this story really does give you that. I asked an earlier question about why the second one was seen, because obviously you pulled the line from the eyes of the city you're on. Right. Were there more to it than that about why eventually Constantine is in these exotic locations and now he's right. just... Well, honestly, they came to me and said, we want to, we want to adapt this from this graphic novel. And that's what happened in the graphic novel, so that made the decision for me. <laughs> you know, and it, it was interesting because it takes him out of his comfort zone. You know, that also makes him more vulnerable because he's not, he, there's a line somewhere where he says, you know, he knows London inside and out. He knows every little nook and corner and cranny, every dark corner of its psyche. Los Angeles is something completely different. So to have the actual embodiment of Los Angeles appear to him uh, made for an interesting dynamic as well. You, you've been speaking very passionately about this story. You seem to put a lot into it. Yeah. What do you want people to take from it when they watch it? You know, hopefully the same things that I take from the, from the stories and the movies that I love, which is, which is a, an experience that first and foremost touches you, you know, and moves you emotionally and takes you on an emotional journey and makes you think as well, you know. But for me, it's this story in particular, it's the emotional journey because... Um, we deal without giving too much away with sort of John's original sin uh, and and part of this journey aside from the journey with Chaz and trying to get Chaz's daughter back is 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 a redemption arc for John too as well um, so there's a lot of emotional material in there and, so, and, and it really peels the character apart I think in new ways and and I and, and I hope more than anything people get an emotional journey out of this story. Well, I have the opportunity but you're sure you have. I have to ask. Uh, Craven for that first is one of my favorites. Thank you. And so I was just wondering, it's announced that Craven is yeah. going to get from Venomverse, which is presumably without Spider-Man. I was wondering, right. two-part question, one for work, one for my own knowledge. Yeah. What do you think of that? And the second part is, do you ever read a follow-up to your story, Grim Hunt? Uh, what do I think of it? In the end, I can't think anything of it until they make a movie. Because, you know, it's like people freak out about hearing an idea for a movie, let alone where they see like a 30-second trailer and decide it's a disaster. You know, I, I, I can't do that until I see the film. Um, and the second question was... Yeah, I actually, when Grim Hunt came out, there were a, a series of backup stories that I wrote along with that story. Craven stayed dead for, what, 25 years? Something crazy like that. So I take a lot of pride that they didn't bring him back too quick. And I thought they did a really nice job of it. Uh, I thought it was a good, strong, solid story. Would part of me have wanted that to be the end and have him be dead forever? Sure. It's not the way it works in superhero comics. These characters have to go on and on and on and on. That he stayed dead that long was a great achievement. Mm -hmm. They just kept on giving him sons that looked like him. They right. should have just kept it with that. Yeah, like, I, we didn't I, need the original yeah, one. Yeah, I gave him one of the sons too, I know. <laughs> As a writer, you have a reputation for really digging into the psyches of your characters. So on that level, what is it that sets Constantine apart from, say, a Spider-Man or a Batman? You know, uh, kind of what we've been talking about is that, that inner tension. Spider-Man is a very complex and real character. I mean, I love, I've wrote so many Spider-Man stories. I love that character. But he doesn't have that same tension that Constantine has. That war between the hard and you know he is a hard ass manipulative bastard. But he's he's also he's also something else that's hidden behind that shell, you know? And it's always the tension between those two things. If he was just a hard edged emotional bastard, he wouldn't be an interesting character, at least to me. Some people like that. You know, but I I, I don't want characters that are, are one dimension. You want something that's multi-dimensional and some inner conflict in the character and he has such interesting inner conflict there you know I always I just keep saying so he's selfish he's hard he can be cruel 
And yet, in the end, he always comes out on the side of the light. So there's something else going on in there. Or he could just say, screw it, make the deal with the devil and give up, you know? But he doesn't. He never does. And that's what makes him interesting to me. I was going to say, one of the fun things about the Justice League Dark animated movie was him, Batman, as his If you had the chance to take Constantine and pair him up with any character, it would kind of add some more depth to Constantine. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I was going to say Nort. <laughs> Constantine and Larflees. Now I won't be able to get that out of my head. Um, you know, that, I, I don't know. You know, sometimes the danger is when you, when you take characters from one world and bring them into another, you know, it was a delicate balance to have Constantine and Batman together. Because it, even, you know, Batman is as dark as you're going to get in the superhero side of things, but it's still almost another universe than the supernatural universes, you know? So They're teaming up in a book right now. Batman and Constantine? Yeah. Oh, Batman okay. Batman Dams. Well, there you go. There you go. And I, and I guess it's all the approach to the story, really, you know? Um, but certainly Batman, you know, but what I loved was what in the comics was in Justice League Dark, the dynamic with the John and Zatanna. I really enjoyed playing with that and their relationship, and it was the same thing. Well, I don't love you except that I love you, but I don't love you, you know? And there's that <laughs> tension again, you know? Okay. Um, you talked earlier about the story that loosely inspired this. Are there any other Hellblazer concept stories that you would love to adapt? You know, w w what I would like to do, if they ever did another one, there's one pivotal... Well, I guess they've done this... I don't want to give anything away. Damn. Well, okay. <laughs> you know, the backstory with Astra Logue. Uh, which is really the sort of the inciting inf incident, as they say, of his whole in career in life, and, and that he lost this girl to that demon all those years before. And that's one of the things that's going on with him rescuing Chaz's daughter as a way to atone for how he screwed up years before. Um, I would like to see the resolution of that storyline. Can't, you know, a journey to hell, and can he get her back? And he finally, after all these years, get her back. And I think in the comics they eventually did get her back. Um, I am not. I don't have an encyclopedic uh, knowledge of all 35 years of Constantine, but I think that. But I think that would be a great story to tell. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Because uh, he was mentioned. He was signaling, but oh, well, he'll be. He'll let us know. Okay. Um, again, because you are a writer who's known for getting to the core and the, the psyche of characters, is there anyone you haven't written yet that you would think would be a challenge you would like to take on? That's a tough one because between the animated stuff and my comic book work, I've probably written 95% of these characters, you know? But that doesn't mean you can't revisit them. Right. You know, uh, they're, you know, I love the DC supernatural characters. I love, you know, the, the, that, that corner of the, of the, that's why I was so happy that they did the Justice League Dark movie. Right. Because that corner of the DC universe, you know, Swamp Thing, Spectre, Phantom Stranger, all these, Dead Man, all these wonderful characters. Um, I would return to any of them. I really enjoy them, and even you know, and at Marvel, like I love Doctor Strange, you know, for the same reason because right. he's he's an interesting psychological case on his own, and then he's moving through all these metaphysical worlds. So you get to play with themes of spirituality and metaphysics and psychology and emotion. So I really love those characters. But the trick for me over the years is when you go back to a character or if you're writing them for the first time, is trying to find that corner, and it's hard. The longer the characters have been around, find that corner of the psyche that maybe no one has found before. You know, so it's like you got to get this drill and keep drilling deeper until you hit something that no one else has hit before, and hopefully you can illuminate that character in a new way. Right. Yeah. Well, he's not stopping us. If you want to ask me anything yeah. else, we can start talking about Spider-Man. So. <laughs> <laughs> talking about Craven all day. <laughs> I think Craven's Last Hunt would make a great animated movie. I think, yes. uh, like one of these, you know, nice ninety-minute animated movie. Then you don't have to worry that much that your lead actor is buried for a third of the story. You know, <laughs> I always thought if they do, we're going to adapt Craven as a live action. That would be the biggest problem you'd have. You have some actor you're paying thirty million dollars to, and then you tell him for a third of the story you're going to be buried alive. You know, <laughs> I'm surprised that it hasn't been adapted yet. Um, I think it's one of the most iconic Spider-Man. Yeah, I, I, I am surprised. I am surprised. Oh, so, so can we do one more question, or are we done? You know what? You can do one more question because I like these guys. Okay. <laughs> and I hope it's a good one. No pressure. And it's not about Spider-Man. Right. <laughs> so about Spider-Man. 
Any more Constantine <laughs> questions? Um, do you have any more? Do you want to continue with Constantine? Do you have any plans to go anywhere else? You know that that um, that decision's above my pay grade. You okay. know, but if they came to me tomorrow and said we're doing another Constantine for CWC. I wouldn't let them finish the sentence before I'd say yes. I really, you know, I really had such a good time on this project. I was saying to somebody before, you know, sometimes the creative process is really, really great, and the finished product doesn't necessarily live up to what you had in your head. Other right. times the finished product was great, but it was hell getting there. This project, from beginning to end, everyone I worked with along the way, it was just great. And then to see the finished project, product, and it's really good, that doesn't happen all the time. Thank you. So I, 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 would, I would do another Constantine in a heartbeat. How did they end up bringing you in the fold to work on these? Well, I've been doing animation for like 16 years now. So uh, I've done a lot of animation. I've, I've done, worked on three of these previous movies. And uh, I think it sort of bounced off the Justice League Dark movie somehow. And I think the fact that maybe the fact that I'd worked on these characters in the comics as well. But... Um, this was an interesting one because it wasn't, it was done through CWC, so it wasn't done through the, uni the usual Warner Brothers animation channels. It was a whole different group of people. You know, people from Greg Berlanti's company and from the CW, so it was, it was interesting. It was, I was working with a whole different group and it was, uh, it, it made the project uh, that much more exciting. How did the CWC angle affect your approach to actually writing the script? It didn't. That's the great part. Because I just wrote a 90-minute movie, and then after the script, and I had to keep it in the back of my mind, it was going to be broken up in chapters. But, you know, scenes have a, just, if you write a scene right, they're going to have those climaxes and those endings. Where you can break them anyway. But I just wrote the whole movie, and then after the fact, everyone got together and figured, well, where, what can we pull out for these five-minute segments? If I would have had to write it in five-minute segments, and then put it together and add more for a movie, that could have been really complex and difficult. Since you've had some experience uh, with the recent New 52 animated movies, do you have the opportunity to pitch future release movies that you would love to write? And if so, why don't we have Justice League International? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. You know, 99 out of 100 times they come to me and they say, this is what we're doing next. You know, I've worked on just this year like three different projects. None of them were initiated by me. They come to me because they have their reasons why they're choosing this character or that character, and, and off we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys.